program that you just started. You know, you know, yeah, I can believe you know about a plague of silence where people get intimidated and don't know how to speak when there is an injustice in the community. So starting this, you know, we have been trying to come on life and some kind of technical challenges, but finally, finally, we're here. How does this be life works? Uh, you you call people through Messenger and then you can add them directly. Um, just like I did to you. So you send the link, the person um, downloads it, and that's it, and just joins the program. Okay. Uh, I'd like to see how we're being displayed on Facebook because I see... Yeah, have here. a look. It's, it's just side by side. and. Um... All right, I can see. Okay, that's very cool then. All right, I think we'll go straight to the topic to discuss this topic. So... People that are watching us can go ahead to leave their comments. People that wish to contribute to the topic, to contribute because this is a very sensitive topic. And I'm happy to be able to discuss it with you because we'll get to the large public and then we'll know what is it. So people that are interested in contributing the solution, first of all, we want to discuss about rape culture in Africa and uh, why are people tempted? Of course, there are rape cases all over the world. We've seen that it's not just about Nigeria, but there are other countries, like in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, and in India, you know, most religious countries. And some of these countries that are so religious, in fact, sex is like, a, it's sacred here. You don't talk about it, but there are people dying internally to participate in it. So we see that same culture in Nigeria where no one talks about sex. Even parents cannot discuss this with their children. But there are people who prey on innocent victims, on weak victims. They prey on them. And this is why we have the case. And this even in Atlanta, there's a, there's a report coming in that Kimi Dakolo and his family saw some kind of strange men roaming around their compound with guns and all those things. So this case is becoming very serious. I don't know what people think about this, but let's see. I'm trying to connect to your, to see the comment that people are leaving. Yeah. Um, I think it's just people are just joining, but you, you, should I share it to your page? Yes, I'm about to share it now. I will share it. Yes, okay. tag me. Mm, tag me up. I'm about okay. to show you. I'm sharing the video. All right, that's fine. I'm sharing them in groups. Share it to your page. Okay. Brother Charles, thanks. Brother Ines, thanks. You guys are my pillars. Anytime. Okay. You know, um, innocent, I'm just um, grateful to God. I mean, the day that they had the, they brought the, um, what was it? The, where the campaign where people were out with banners and stuff. I was, it was a Sunday and I was in bed, but I was so, so happy because finally, at least we have people who can talk. We have people who can hold a placard and say, say no to sex abuse, say no to, I was glad that finally something is changed. There's something that is there's a there's a tweak, there's a change in the in in our mindset. So that mm -hmm. is a major breakthrough. That is a major breakthrough. And you know, for any change in in a, in in a, a line, so so sort of like a chemical reaction. If there's a reaction going on. And there has to be a stop or a, a, a stop or a slowing down of that reaction. You have to add something to it, either to slow it down or to fast it. If you want to stop it completely, there is always a force that has to be bigger than the already the force that is already operating. And that is the only way you can stop. It's like it's common in physics. If something is moving fast, you need a bigger and a stronger force to be able to stop it. Now, the silence in our community is something that has been there for decades. 
So for one person or two people to come out and speak, we know the amount of opposition, the amount of, uh, of threat, even people will be losing their life because of that speaking out, because it's not something that is common in our culture for a woman to come on live broadcast and say, this person who is a prominent person raped me. So it is something that is should go in the history books. Like we have broken the silence. We are now able to speak. So for me, I am very, very happy. Whether they hold guns, whether they are parading Timmy Dachlo's uh, premises, I'm just happy that we are speaking. What did you, why do you think people came out in mass to speak? Is it because Timmy Dachlo is a celebrity? Um, I think he's, I think there's something going on. I think people's mindsets are already changing. Because if you look back, even when people speak, uh, like I think Stella Damasus, the actress, has spoken some time ago. They've done videos like movies, Nollywood movies on rape. But nobody actually even said anything. Nobody spoke out. They didn't do any uh, demonstration, but they just quietly doing small, you know, trying to indirectly speak, but they're not actually speaking. Those type of speaking well, has been going on. But I think at the point where Busola spoke, it was something that was already ready. People's mindsets were already ready to, to run with what she said. That is why, and the second part could be because of celebrity status, but I think people's mind were um, uh, opera about men of God doing all sort of things. So when that came on, it just sort of, yes, yeah, this is what we've been waiting for. Let's do this. I think it's a combination of different um, things that it just was a perfect timing. Let me put it that way. It was a perfect timing. Do you know who is my hero in this? in this saga. A hero. My hero is Timmy Dakodo. Do you yeah. know why? No. Okay. There are instances where children, women, sisters, you know, family members, friends are being a victim of rape. But no one can be able to stand for them. No one can be able to speak for them. Before Busola Dakodo came out to speak publicly about her rape. I've been following Timmy Dakodo on his Twitter and his Instagram account. He has been posting already, giving hints about this rape. He said, "Why, if you see a church member who suddenly refused to come to church, you don't ask questions, you don't ask why. He kept giving hints. He started posting little, little stuff, but he didn't call him. Mm. He was posting stuff and was giving hints to the rape culture that was going on. Mm. So when eventually, he was the outspoken one. She never said anything. He was the one speaking about it, writing, writing, and giving hints. And people were following gradually mm. until she came out publicly to give the interview. So I want to recommend this. I want to commend his act and the people that are watching us and people that are listening to us that it is very important that you stand for red victim, you know, a lot of people they brought that complaint, they brought that blames about her. They said, Why did we have to wait for so long to do it? It's people might not even understand this because if you are not in that position, you will not understand what these victims are going on are going through. You know, I've had encounter with red victims, and uh, I was in charge actually of writing story for members of refugees who come to they seek for refugees. So since they cannot write in French, I was being charged to be speaking English and I write their story in French. I'm not going to disclose names, but just few individuals who are attending to. And some of them, these rape incidents that happened to them, that is like years, 10, you know, some of them were at the age of 14 and being sold out by their parents. So now they found themselves in this predicament rape that happened at the age of 14 and a lady who is now 22 is still relieving that trauma that happened of a man who assaulted her, used tiagas on her body and 
and the people outside hearing her screaming on the room and nobody came out to intervene because they wanted her to work for a specific madam and all those things. So all these issues, and I've experienced, I've seen the trauma that these people live, you know. We have children. We have children. We have daughters. People that are seeing us. Don't be too quick to throw in blames on the victim because you have sisters, you have mothers, you have daughters, you have relatives that are sick. Yeah. You know, the woman body, it's sacred. If a woman is not interested to participate in sexual act, it doesn't just violate her body, it violates her mind. Because you leave, your mind gets messed up, seriously messed up. You live with this trauma. I'm saying this because of an incident that also happened to me. At one point, I remember I, w- I went to do to sport actually, and uh, there was a car coming behind me, and the car slowed down. I I kept jogging. I was wondering why the car was not passing me. I turned. I saw that the car was slowed slowed down, and I thought it was a lady inside. Okay, I kept moving, and then she suddenly signaled to me. I I said she wanted to ask for direction, so I stopped came to listen to what she had to say. It was a French lady who wanted something different that I didn't understand. But I left that evening with a very traumatized idea in my head. I was like, she's an old lady, you know. So the whole issue, I felt like a, like a prey, actually. Like a prey, you know. So you've been in that position of being prayed by somebody who is powerful, that you will not just subdue you physically, but psychologically by, you know, threatening to harm you or threatening you with heaven or punishment or giving you all sorts of lies, you know, try to tell you that things is okay and you don't have to say anything about it, that you'll be fine. That is what some of those victims go through. Mm. Like Busola, she didn't report this case for a very long time. People do not understand why and why she's coming out now to speak about it. So people actually really, really, really need to stop this and support her and that I'm actually happy with the level of revolution that is going on in Nigeria now. I've never seen Nigeria come out in such a massive support. I, I think it's the right time because so many things are wrong, innocent. So many things are wrong. Like in the churches, they've been praying for, for decades. Receive, receive, receive. People are waking up to say, what have we really received? We, we receive, receive, receive. Nothing is coming into our hand, but you guys are buying private jets every day. You guys are driving Lincoln Navigator. You guys are having fleets of cars in the middle of poverty. So I think like when you get saturated, there is, you can't take in anymore. So it's got to come out because people have been murmuring. They've been sort of saying it quietly, you know, the plague of silence. Nobody wants to speak out. And suddenly, they are just tired of everything. They know these things are happening. People know. Even if she hasn't told anybody, some of them, they tell their friends. Some of them, like in the case of Fato Yibo, whether that is his name, Fato Yibo, that's what I call him, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fato Yibo, that's the name. Fato Yibo. In the case of this guy, in the town where he was operating, people knew what was going on. Because I was on a program the other day, I was watching, not I wasn't a speaker or a guest, I was watching. And a lady called in and actually said, she lived in that community many years ago and all of them knew that this is what he was doing. And for God's sake, did we know how how people there who knew what this guy was doing? Or people were just quiet. He was operating. All the young girls knew. Even when these girls stopped going to their fellowship, they suspected. They suspected that probably he has done it again. But nobody sort of spoke out because of the the plague of silence. And I was going to ask you, I think when we're discussing, I was going to say You know, the root, I like to go back to the cause of the problem. And when we, if we go back to the, you you post pictures of uh, people who say innocent is so controversial, but you make make very, very valid, intelligent points. The other time you posted uh, pictures of women, traditional women in their traditional attire. And they had like beads 
uh, cowries or just over their nipple and they had little cowries over their waist. And that is their culture and tradition. And they used to go dance and people enjoyed the dance and the culture. They were not looking at them as sex, sex symbols, sex I They were not looking at them to rape them. They were preserving them for marriage. They were grooming them. They bring them out to showcase, this is our virgins in the land. You know, they were sh showcasing them. But all of a sudden, there, is this, there was this mind shift where women, all of us from the culture, we've all become sex, sex objects, sex, I didn't think they see. Even young children, eight, nine, have become, how, how do people rape eight, nine years old children? I, how do you look at them? And also as we're growing up, you shush, you can't speak. Innocent, I can't look at your face if you're an elder. It's an insult. I look down, or I bend down, or I prostrate. So that culture is imbe embedded in my, in my DNA since I was young. You're talking to me, even when you're talking, I know what you're saying is completely nonsense, hogwash, I still say yes, sir. Yes, sir, subservient. This is what I say. So it then moves into the church, in the community, in the mosque. So when an adult says, so lie down here, I lie down. Open your legs, I open. Because I can't, I wasn't brought up to challenge him. I was brought up to, my friend, you're going to be a wife someday. You have to obey, be like this, sit like this. Women are never taught to stand up and speak out. We always taught to sit like this, cross your leg, cook, bend, obey. Your man is my Lord, your king, all these things. So when you're growing up and you see an elderly man, you cannot resist him. You're looking up to him as a Lord or as a king. So whatever he says you should do, you do. And then you wake up from there, you cannot tell anybody. Because he's told you, if you tell anybody, I'll kill you. So already you are subservient and somebody says, I'll kill you. How are you going to speak? So from our culture, we have already accommodated rape from the way we're brought up. If you see somebody from a developed world, a young child, five years old, outspoken, straight ahead, innocent, is talking to you straight you can't, he's questioning your move. But when you see our African child, how are you? I'm fine. How was school? School is fine. Monotonous, they cannot hold a conversation. It is in our culture. Auntie, 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 uncle, uncle. Here in England, everybody has a name. Your uncle is only your biological uncle. Not everybody is uncle here. So children call me ID, calls innocent. Even though you are 70 years old, even if it's your father-in-law, you call them Sam, Charles, John, hi, John. That's your father-in-law, but it's fine. That's his name. They don't attach all this too much respect. So young people are being raped because of the culture. Also, I'm not saying that's a major problem, but we mm -hmm. cannot speak out because of the culture of Silent since we were born, brought up, grown. We've all grown to be silent. We can't talk. That is one of the things I've seen. But now, because people are now being enlightened, social media is exposing a lot of things. People are getting knowledgeable. People are seeing other parts of the world. I think this is why there is an awakening of the mindset of people saying, no, we cannot tolerate this anymore. We have to begin to speak out. That's the aspect of culture. Hmm. Very interesting. You, you got so many aspects of it because rape actually starts from the mind for the individual. You know, individual, they conceive this idea, the environment favors it. You know, you spoke about the subservient culture where we don't we can't even look at our elders in the eyes to speak to them. But here in the Western world, you know, I wanted to ask you a question. I don't know if you feel comfortable answering it because 
what year did you quit Nigeria? What year did you left Nigeria? Because I wanted to ask a question. There is something that is going on. There's there's a culture right now in Nigeria. It's about the relationship between the male and the female. I'm talking about courtship. I'm talking about a male trying to woo a female by asking her out apparently. There are certain conditionality that comes with it. This thing is endemic to Nigeria. It's cultural in the sense that the women, for the fear of being looked upon as being cheap, they try to pretend as if they are not interested in the man that is asking them out. They, when the man who obviously wants the woman, the woman also is attracted to the man, but because she doesn't want to be called cheap or she doesn't want to be called a whore, she will play what they call hard to get game that they play. So the man has to go after her, he has to woo her with money, with gifts, with all sorts of things, he has to impress her, which is somehow it, it charming, such a thing. But the negative aspect of it is that it sends you know, conflicting signals. So the man doesn't really know when the woman is actually interested or when she's playing hard to get. So the man who obviously wants the woman will persist in pursuing her, he will keep trying. I'm speaking about this because you just spoke about the culture now. You spoke about mm -hmm. the culture. So the point you made, I'm just trying to buttress your point now. This man will try to woo the woman. He will continue with his, you know, flamboyancy and try to talk to her. Maybe she will reason. Maybe eventually she will give in. If the woman doesn't give in, he becomes frustrated at the end of the day. And uh, maybe he ends up insulting her. Do you think you're the only beautiful woman? There are so many fishes in the river, in the in the water. I can go get one, you know. And then if the woman is interested, she sends so many signals. Probably she might agree to come to his house the first night. And then she might not come back again. Or when she comes, she says, don't touch me, don't touch me. You know, all those, they call it shakara that kept coming in. That kept coming in. Yes, thank you, Tracy. I'm having it hard to not say your son name. But that's a very important point I'm going to discuss. This Nollywood promoting this culture of rape. Yes. So this culture of wooing, the lady will play hard to get for almost 21 days, 60 days sometimes even. First of all, some of them will encourage the man to buy gift for them. They will ask him to do a lot of things to be to sacrifice things for them. But they will not go down to give him what he wants. You know, so prolonging the suspense, the, all these things. I know that it's only in Nigeria that that happened. That had to play game. <laughs> only in Nigeria. I've seen other African countries, South Africa, for instance, Kenya, other countries, Cameroon, that is, and they're even close to us. They don't act the same way. If the lady is interested in the man, she doesn't hesitate to say she likes the man. She is not shy about it. Men's sexuality, men's libido is virtually the same with that of the woman, apart from certain period where the woman's body, the biological condition requires that she's not in mood of all those things. But if not even men, women require sometimes sexual act more than the men. So, but in Nigeria, they made it so sacred, they made it so something to be ashamed of of a woman to be able to express herself. So the problem is that it increases these missed signals. I'm, I'm speaking about Nigeria. It's not just Nigeria we see this problem. We see it in India. There's, India has the highest highest record of rape. Yeah. rape cases. We yeah. see the same thing in Pakistan. We see the same thing in Bangladesh. You know, all these countries where they censor sex talks. We see people being forced into what they don't want to do. So this culture of shame surrounding this, where the woman cannot express herself, where the man has to try harder to try to woo her. Now, there are instances where the woman is truly, truly not in the mood. She will speak to the man, look, please don't touch me. I'm not interested in this. The man will still think, you know, that there's even a saying they said, when the woman says no, She's actually saying yes. So the reason why I asked you, when you left Nigeria, I wanted to understand, what do you think about this culture? What do you think about this? Did you experience this? Did you, was that your mentality? Were you, did you thought about this? Or when did you, when did you change your mind? I think uh, it's, it's very common in 
uh, I left Nigeria 2008. But even before then, I think growing up, like the culture, that was the normal thing, like for you to show your, um, how do I put it, that you're not a cheap woman, you know? When a man comes to woo you the first time, you can't just say yes. It's, it means you're waiting for a man, you're some cheap woman, young girl. So it was something that you grow up with, like, okay, so if a man comes, you can't just say yes. But then, the, while I was young and while we were growing up, there was, if you like somebody, the person will know. Even if you're doing shakara, it's, there's, you, the person will know. But there are some cases where it's clear cut no, and the guy is still coming. It's clear cut, I don't want it. But in the man's head, he's saying, you want it, I know you want it. No, I don't, I'm not interested. So it's a thin line when you want it, but you're just trying to play along, maybe to see if it's a serious person, because if he's a serious guy, he will persist, he will come, you know, he will, he will come along. You want to prove if he's serious, because there was a lot of play playboys around. Right? If you're not interested, I move on to the next victim. But there is a clear cut, I don't want, I don't like it, I don't want it. And I don't want it to to, to Nigerian man, men, some of them, they think you mean I want it. And then they rape the girl. They rape the woman and said, I know you want this thing. But the, the mindset, the girl, if she's saying I don't want it to the point of you being in bed, she doesn't want it. And this is the truth. She might, as it still comes back to how we were brought up, that you are brought up not being able to speak, to stand up for yourself. You are not being able. I, 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 became, I became an adult and I think I finished or almost finished me medical school. And I was still timid, not able to stand up for myself. Like, no, I was always accommodating people and stuff and negativity. Even when I know it's wrong, I'll just be smiling like, okay, you know, I don't want to offend. Even when I know this person is toxic, I'm still accommodating, you know, I don't want to offend. But there's a point in my life, my mindset shifts, the way I, I see things, the society, everything change, you keep growing, you keep developing yourself to a point of saying, no, I cannot be like this. And that comes with development, mindset shift. Um, I cannot grow up and continue being like, this is not how the world is. This is not how I'm supposed to be. So a young woman in Africa uh, growing up, especially in Nigeria, you are taught to say, if a man comes once, don't even, you can't just say yes, you become cheap. You are a cheap woman. And the man self will be boasting. I just, I just checked him once, her once, and she said yes. Well, she, that is what the guy will be saying. I didn't even ask her. She said yes. But some men will say, ah, my own, I followed her more than a year. I was pursuing it. And they are trying to portray, okay, this one is not cheap. This one is cheap. It's all in the mindset. It's all in our culture. It's all how we grew up. And these are the things that have to change. If a girl wants you, and maybe she's saying, I don't want well, you will see the signs. Every woman drops signs, drop cues. It's the man that is supposed to see the cues. If she doesn't want, all her cues will be no, 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 negative. I don't need it. But if she wants, or she's, you stay away maybe a week, she calls you, ah, I'm not here from you. You that want to marry wife, you can't even call your girlfriend. She's giving you cues. She wants you, but she's just trying to be. But if She's just, no, 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 completely no. You are still forcing your way through. Then you say, her no meant yes. No, it didn't mean yes. It meant no. You don't have to violate her. That's what I think is all in, in the minds in terms. So because some women, as we're growing up, you are taught to be um, not cheap. Don't portray yourself as cheap. And you start to play all these nonsense games. Some of them have even missed their husband playing all these games of I don't want, I don't want. Meanwhile, they want. And some, it is the church. It is the hypocrisy going on in the church. I don't want to. 
What did you say? Did you say new wives? I feel like their husband, I don't want. No, I said some girls have lost their husbands, a husband oh, exactly. to be a life partner yeah. because of this culture. And man is not able to wait to follow this. You are don't want to the end. So he just moves on to someone else. So it is all culture. It's all in our mindset, the way we were brought up, I think. But this type of things, as I say, is changing. In the next in the next 10 years, it's even going to change more. Women are even walking up to men and say, look, I like you, you look good, I like you. Now, in Nigeria, which will not be happening 20 years ago, how can you do that? You brought yourself down as a woman. But now we see women sitting in bar having a glass of beer. They don't care. They are just having a beer. 10 years ago, you cannot find a woman in a beer parlor drinking beer. That means you are not a wife material. Nobody will marry you. But now you see groups of girls taking themselves out and just having fun, sitting down and drinking and having fun. And that's the, so things are changing. Mindset is shifting. So it is a good thing to me. Overall, I'm still saying I am happy because things are changing, especially in Nigeria. Do you know, let me share something with you. The first time, the first time, the first time a lady approached me to express her feelings, but the, what came to my mind wasn't that she was cheap, actually. The thought that came to my mind was, wow, oh, really? Uh, because this is a lady who, I was like, mm, am I that handsome? That was what I started asking myself. I say, am I handsome to the extent of why this lady would be interested? You know, that should be the mindset of men. Like if a lady had the courage to approach you to express herself and tell you what she feels, it means that you must be really, that you must have given her a very important impression because probably your attitude, probably your looks. So instead of judging her because she was able to be bold to express herself, I'm just thinking of ways that we can be able to, you know, influence this culture. This thing we're doing today, we're talking. People can contribute to this by sharing this video. We're going to play, share it on YouTube channels. We're going to share it on platforms that are available that people can be able to see. Participate in this conversation because cultures have to be dynamic. We have to change things that are not comfortable. People are talking about customs or African culture, this African culture that our ancestors who are dead already set this you know, path for us. We have to channel our life according to this epoch, according to the technology. I was telling somebody, I said, if Jesus Christ is alive today, he might not use donkey, you know, he might probably use Irish Airways, or he might use, you know, uh, Dubai Airways to travel around the world and, you know, going into different continents. So when you're in a specific epoch, you adapt the system, you adapt the level of development in that epoch. Right now, we're in the 21st century. Things have changed in our society. We have to change. If you refuse certain development, if you refuse certain evolution, cultural evolution, this is where we start getting problems, you know, demeaning women and placing women in this position. So men should be able to be proud. You know, if a woman approaches you to express herself, instead of considering her as a whole or telling her that she's cheap or trying to judge her, you should be able to value and respect her opinion when she does that. And Tracy is making ma making a very important point. She's talking about Nollywood. Mm -hmm. she, just, she just made a comment about, she said the man is being portrayed as a savior. That the man is being portrayed as a savior. I'm not finding her comment. Tracy, I'm trying to, she's saying in Nollywood films, the man is always portrayed as the savior of the woman. He comes to the village with his big black jeep. <laughs> Takes her shopping proudly. They speak anything you want. What can you say about the Nollywood culture? Where that Nollywood has really damaged a lot of things. That uh, they have a regulatory body, but the regulatory body still have the same mindset. So they are not regulating anything. They portray even in rape. They portray the wrong part of the stories instead of doing a movie to educate and create awareness 
and actually see the perpetrator of the abuser being punished, they make it seem as the man example, a girl was brought from the village to this uh, wealthy home and the man raped her and they showed how the, the madam of the house um, sent this girl packing and the man was just doing big man around the house. How can you say, how would you say, and this is something you're acting and it didn't have an end as the girl got um, vindicated, how the man got arrested so that people will know that rape cannot just be like something you sweep under the carpet, but they're portraying it in a very direct. Okay, after Busola confessed, some Nollywood comedians even made a joke of what she said. It's on the YouTube. They call it the Abyssin King. They got the girl who said, uh, he, he gave you crest. Yes, his crest. He gave, he gave me after his crest. Press. So he gave you crest. Yes. So why did you not speak? I can't speak. They were using it to, 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 to make fun. And I was watching. I said, how can we ever change with this Nollywood mindset? These guys are on their own. Some of the directors, sorry to say, are rapists on their own. own. Grow in a movie, they ask to sleep with them before they give them a role. They forcefully go in and rape them before they say, okay, I'll make you a star. So they portray themselves as the boss, the god. Every Nollywood movie will show a man with big jeep, jeep just like Tracy said, driving into a village and he meets a poor woman with a daughter and she, he has come to be the savior of the family to bring them out of poverty. Why won't young girls be raped by young men and their mother will say, keep quiet, keep quiet. Is he the one that raped you? Ah, it's good. If he's the one that raped you, that's fine. How can that be fine? Because they portray that these men are the savior. They have come to alleviate my poverty and they're flaunting the money about. They have not taught the girl that in your poverty, you have dignity. Even if you don't have roof over your head, you have dignity as a woman. Nobody should violate you. Your body is support if they want to portray anything and not portraying some African men as bosses. And this is the people grow up, young boys are looking at this movie and thinking, I want to be like that man. I'll just go into the village and choose a girl and just do what I like. That is the message they are portraying. And portraying the woman as if they are waiting for this savior to come and remove them from poverty. When they have all it takes to be whoever they want to be, if the society gives them the opportunity. What stops the bridge man sponsoring the girl to go to school? What stops the community saying, look, our child wants to go to school. She doesn't want to marry yet. But even the village head will call the family and say, this rich man, you cannot let him slip off your, your, they don't even care whether he's a criminal. What as if they are the savior. And that aspect of Nollywood has to change. I'm not saying they don't have good messages. I'm saying the messages they're portraying about sexuality, about the, 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 the dignity of a woman is wrong. They've got to change that. Very important. You know, some of the point about having Madame in the house and the house there bringing young ladies in the house and working at the woman trying to cover up for her marriage. You made a point about- Yeah, yeah, it's, who are it's, it's very, very common. And they, they bring these girls because they brought them from the village. They are poor. The, the madame brings her in. This is why in the morning we talked about who is responsible for safeguarding a child, which is every one of us that is an adult. The, you bring this young girl into your home. They will guard things that this young girl is a piece of rock, a property. I just go in and violate her. So he goes in and violates her, rapes her. The girl 
is looking for who to speak with, calls the madam. Who <laughs> oh, came and slept with me this night? The madam will start victimizing her. You are a witch. You want to come and destroy my home. They've sent you to come and destroy my home. Which Oga? Which Oga are you talking about? With blows, with slaps, with punishment, with all sorts. And the next day, the girl is sent packing. Sometimes that girl you sent packing is already pregnant for Oga. You have sent her away. Now let us talk about what is going to wait for you in the future. She's going to go and have that child or some aborted or maybe kill herself along the line. Or maybe she's had that child in the village, a boy. Because she's had that child, she's trying to fend for herself and the child. She can't. What is going to happen is a chain reaction. The boy becomes a criminal and comes to your house to rob you and your wife in the night and rapes your wife and your children. That is what is going to happen. It's a vicious cycle. All the criminals on the street today are children who we didn't safeguard, who we didn't protect. In our homes, in our marriages, we push them out on the streets because they've told you that, oh God, you're protecting your marriage, but your children are going to grow up with these people in the society. That is why it is expedient for every adult to safeguard a child, not just because it's my child, because it is our child. It is our child. It's our society. We want to keep it neat and clean. We want to raise moral, morally uh, right children. So we have a lot of children around us in Africa. You know, some houses, you have more than 10 children. They're always coming around. It's a communal relationship, communal living. Who protects the child? How then do we have rapists everywhere? Because these children are broken, broken children from childbirth. They've seen people rape. They've known that rape, people can rape and go get away with it. So they can rape too. That is why it's a cycle. So madams, yes, they are the major cover-up for these rape cases. The madams, they want to cover up. They want to cover up. And this aspect I said to in the morning, only truth will prevail. If you marry a rapist, don't bring anybody's child to your house. Let him continue to rape you as his wife. Don't bring anybody's child to your house. If you have grown up children, big boys and girls, why do you go and get a teenager, a little girl, and bring to your house to come and be your house girl? You're going to finish her. All the boys with their hormones, their father, everybody's going to pounce on this young girl. So it is an abuse on his own, innocent. It is a major abuse. And the women, I keep saying, the women are the major cover-ups, perpetrators, co-criminals co in this in this whole saga. They are. You know, for the people that are just joining us, you made a very important point in the beginning of this conversation. And I don't know if you noticed, but you have captured all three points already in this conversation. Because you, you said something about rape, and going back to finding the source of the problem of rape, you have mentioned, made mention of culture already. You have made mention of institution already. And we just talk about Nollywood as an institution. We also talk about the family as an institution. You know, so this, these are the source of this rape culture. So what can we do to influence them? What can we do? What can you do as a parent to participate? You know, the first institution that the child is able to receive is the family. So the form of education that the mother transmits to her son will determine the way he will treat other women outside when he's grown or when he becomes an adult. And the uh, form of education that, that son received in the church, you know, the mother can only transmit the education that she received in the church or maybe by what she's watching in the movie or by her society where she's in place. They can determine the form of education she will transmit to her child. So we spoke about, earlier on you made an example of a, 
the post I made about the African culture, the African custom, I always like to make reference to that. I've posted this almost five times. I'm seeing your comments. I'm seeing uh, Mary Odia. I'm seeing you, Tracy. I'm seeing a lot of people. And the uh, Marvel Chinwe, she's posting book of DSA in Amazon. Okay. That's very interesting. People can check them out. Yeah, so join us. Share your comments. Share your ideas. I'm seeing Tracy. I'm seeing uh, Nick Wells for, for Lola. Very great contribution. We're seeing all your contributions. So keep dropping your comments. This is a movement. It will not stop. The revolution that started just this year, Nigerians are waking up and we are privileged to be part of this movement. So we're discussing about this now. So yes, going back to what you said, the source. Because nothing happened without a cause. Because we have seen that the African culture, the African society wasn't like that in the past. The example you talked about, the post I made, was African women, you know, if you take the Igbo traditional attire, the women are almost walking half naked, you know. They just have a cover on their boots. And I don't know what they call this local wrapper that they tie on your body. Mm. So it, the culture is being replicated everywhere from the north to the south, from the south, from the west to the east. To the east. You see the same thing in South Africa, in Nigeria, in Kenya, in Rwanda, Uganda, everywhere you see. Observe the African traditional dress. It doesn't cover all parts of the body. The women are almost half naked. But for aeons of years, for centuries, for ages, there is something that was imbued in the African mind. Our men know that a lady is supposed to get married as a virgin. A family know that it's the pride of their family to send in one of their sisters to the other family as a virgin, where there is a ceremony that a piece of cloth will be shown that yes, she was a virgin and she bled. And because it, they hold that as a value, as a custom in your mind, you know, that will don't go around violating other people's family because they have sexual liberty, even though this lady are walking almost half naked. But I also spoke about a linguistics research that I did that almost there are almost 70% of African languages do not have the word for it. There are languages that were influenced by the Arab culture, you know, by like Hausa, for instance, was influenced by the Arabic. So they discovered that some African languages do not have the equivalent for the word rape. They do not have the word equivalent for the word prison because no one has ever been to any prison. They don't even understand the concept of prison. They don't know the concept of rape. So there are a few cases of rape being recorded. Why? Because the men know how to respect the women. So even though the woman is walking half naked, nobody calls her a whore. You know? So that culture, but something strange happened to Africa with the introduction of religion, with the introduction of Western civilization. You know, they call it the cultural pollination. Now we have accepted foreign culture, things that have been they're supposed to evolve for the best. We are supposed to evolve for the better. But things now, we are, we are observing a very huge cultural decadence. Now, even though with the Christianity, people, Christians are supposed to be even afraid of engaging with human sexual or violating another woman. But now, there is no single Christian in the world that can come out and brag of the divinity. This is a challenge that is taking us. When it's true, you can find it everywhere. People are no longer, you know, afraid of all these things anymore. So it all boils down to our culture, to our institution. You know? So what do you think we can do now the condition is going on? We also we see that people are not coming up to speak about it. They are not afraid of their past anymore, which is very, 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 very important elements to consider. So what do you suggest to the parents to do? What do you suggest as a mother, as you have a child, you know the pain you will go to if your child is part that is doing he or she is being molested. But what I'm saying he or she because many children do go to molestation to family members with your teachers and all these things. You know, so it's very important as parents that we have a responsibility to play on educating our sons, not just our daughters, our sons, what to do because the first rule you have to respect the woman, you have to respect this. So what do you suggest as part of the solution, what do we do? What would you say to the parents that would also go into the touching to mother and some of our institutions that are in place? 
I think, first of all, Israel, is going to be very difficult. Let me start that way, because some of the parents have grown up with this culture um, for long. I, I think we, as I always say, Nigeria, what we do is when there's a problem, we make noise, make noise, make noise, and everybody forgets about it in two weeks. Everybody will make video, everybody will talk about it, video, news everywhere, and that ends it. There is no sit down and let's have a conversation. This has happened. How do we move forward? How do we change things? There's no impl implementation. In the developed world, what brings about changes and implementation, what brings about new legislations is from the things that has happened. Most times it's from uh, major events that has happened. Then they change regulations, they change re legislations so that it does not happen again. Going back to the family, it is education and creating awareness. But who is going to task himself or herself to educate these families? Here we have what is called Family First. It's a group that they, they, they work with families to educate them. It's to educate families. Like you have children, it is your responsibility to take care of these children. It is to educate adult in our society in Nigeria, that instead of you to say, I'm just going to help uh, uh, the woman's child. I don't want to take her in, in my house so I can help her. You can always help her from her father's house. If you want to help genuinely, send her school fees, maybe yearly, or pay straight to the school and send the child to school from your Lagos or Abuja resident, the child is in Newi or in Akwaibom somewhere, you can pay straight to the school to help the child if you want to help. But they said they have to take this child to their houses. And nobody has ever sat with these people and said, look, that child you've taken to your house, it is your responsibility to safeguard this child. You should not expose this child to rape and abuse. But the people, no, they don't understand this. You remember, I don't know if you're aware, that those days, recently, when young girls are raped, and some maybe the, the man has come to say, I'm sorry, or whatever, they won't even invite the girl that was raped. It's family to family. <laughs> the girl is, doesn't make, the girl is not important. Family to family, they discuss, and then the mother will come and say, we have forgiven him. But it is the girl that was raped. He's supposed to be in that meeting. She's supposed to be able to look this person in the face and tell him how she felt the day he raped her. This will record in the minds of people so that you know that it is not just something to sweep under the carpet. What is it? Like they're saying to Busola, what is it? Just one rape? Just a small rape? What is it? There are other people doing all sorts of things. No, rape is not just something that you push away. This is what we should make parents to understand. If you have children, you should safeguard them. You should protect them. And you should say, What do you have to say about the communication between parents and children? In a level of communication, you think this is a major problem. There's a, there are so many problems, innocent. While I, we grow up, child, a mother would you never have sex education. They don't sit with you and discuss sex. It's a taboo. They can't call vagina. They can't call penis. Nobody calls such names. They give it all funny names. Even till now, they call it all funny names. So you grow up without even knowing what is the boundary. Some children even think, or used to think, that for an uncle to want to touch them, they are doing them a good thing. They don't know, they don't understand. Why? It's not the fault of the mother. The mother too was not taught. So this is the way she knows how to bring up her child. She doesn't know better. The father doesn't know better. So the cycle continues. 
Ignorance upon ignorance. Ignorant generation bringing up another ignorant generation. So nobody talks about sex. Do you see in churches, do they ever say in the mosque, today, we want to discuss sex education? Do they ever say, like, all my children gather here today, I want to speak to people about your body? There's a noise going somewhere. Right. So that aspect of awareness is not yet there. It's not there. In the villages, it's not there. The girl is growing up to, to, to get it's like um, a girl is like um, you know when you're placed in a thick forest, you're trying to clear the forest to pass through. There's nobody to guide you, no map, no direction. You are the one clearing the thick forest, trying to find your way. That is how the girl child is in Nigeria. You are clearing the thick forest before you. All the body changes, all the things happening to you, you don't understand and there's nobody you can talk to. You cannot have a conversation with your mother. It's not there. They shut you down. They don't let you speak. I don't know if the photo is changing now, but um, you, you talk to everybody. You send your child out to anywhere. Go to, um, because everybody's uncle, go to uncle, go to uncle's house. Go and get me this. Oh, go and meet uncle and go and get me this. You, them, you don't know what they are doing. You don't know this person. So, you know, it will be a lot of work, a lot of education, a lot of creating awareness of like what we are doing now. There's too much noise. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know either. Your device is... The sound okay? Your device is... Are they... Can you just write about the sound? So, yeah, just was something very interesting she said. If your device is silent, your device is put them in silence. So, so. Your device is a bit on volume. Uh, it, it does something now. Yeah. Hello? Yes, can you hear me now? It's better. It's gone. Oh, wow. Where is that sound coming from? I don't know. It's gone. So there's a lot of work to be done. It to come, it to start with the family. I think the family is the most important part here. The family, if we can get the family right, then we can get other aspects of the institution right. The family, there's a lot of work to be done. And having all these 10 children, when you don't have a job, you have 10 children. 10, you don't have a job. These are all problems. You're bringing up children who are going to become broken because you're spreading them. A man who spread a children all over the Nigeria, Lagos. My daughter is in Lagos. My son is in Abuja. All of them house girls and house boys. Why did you bring them to the world? You don't need to bring these all these children to the world. So these are education awareness we need to create in the family to be able to have relationship with their children, even if they are poor. They should have dignity as human beings. So that is the one aspect we need to look into. So you encourage mothers to talk more to their female daughters about their sexuality, about their life. At what age do you think such conversations be hold? Five, six, as long as the child can understand you. Okay. Four, even four, if the child can understand you, there are levels of talk. It's not at four you start talking deep things. You just tell 